We got 11 pages from Dildo. In today's video, we are going to be sharing five cutscenes from our short film, Mozzie. Link up here if you haven't seen it. They are little side stories and scenes of either failed shoots or really successful shoots that we had that did not make this travel film. So if you haven't seen the movie, we made a full length documentary, feature length film where we created this book by taking a two week road trip across our home province of Newfoundland with the strict mission of just taking as many photos as we could, again, to make the coffee table book. Now this book is not currently available. We ran a pre-order for this a couple of, well, about a month ago now. Thank you to everyone who pre-ordered. You blew our goal out of the water. So thanks for that. For those of you who have ordered, I'll give you a quick update. These are currently in production. So hopefully another couple of weeks by the time we get them, then we have to pack them, ship them. So probably I would say early to mid November before these end up on your doorstep. But we're not talking about the book. Well, we're kind of talking about the book. We're talking about these five stories that we cut out of our short film. The failures. Some unexpected successes that kind of deserved their own little spotlight. On our very first night in Newfoundland, in St. John's, we decided to go out on a little adventure to try and recreate create a shot that Chris took in 2006 called The Rift. Was it 2006? The photos lived on Flickr, which was like kind of early social media, but it was only for photographers, so mm -hmm. it was very niche. There was no influence really in what you were shooting. For photographers you followed who you were slightly influenced by, but not to the level of what we see today on Instagram. So we yeah. were kind of shooting landscapes based on whatever we can kind of come up with in our head and what we were seeing at the time, mm -hmm. not based on what's popular on the internet. Because there was no like what's popular on the internet. It was shot at night, at dark. You can see there's ice in the foreground. It was dark, but the whole scene was illuminated by sodium vapor lights from the city of St. John's in the in the distance, which was behind a hill. And I think it was at the time shot on a, a Canon 20D, which was like 8.2 megapixels or something. And I shot it vertically and then shot multiple frames to make and stitched it into a panorama. You didn't just auto stitch stuff. No, you, you had to manually you, stitch Yeah, it. I have like these fleeting memories of it. Like I think it was called PT GUI. Like, Old some, people. Somehow it like interfaced with like pano tools. And what you had to do is you had to like, you could plug in your XF info, but then you had to kind of like defish, remove the distortion, line everything up, points and nodes, line everything manually. Anyway. Up. There's a lot of work to like put together a panorama. I really liked how it turned out. Still to this day, I still think it's like a cool photo. So this is like low hanging fruit. You know, yeah. we can, we okay, we know there's like a banger photo we can get and that'll blast it across two page spread. Boom, two pages done. Out for another shoot, it's so dark. We're at Windsor Lake tonight. It's 9.30, the sun just went down a while ago. We're trying to recreate a shot that Chris took like in 2005, 2006. So anyway, we're uh, separated by guardrail. I've got like a reflective thing on my foot. We've got headlamps on and uh, we're just gonna try to get a picture here. Well, Chris is actually taking a picture. I'm cold, by the way, as I'm like shivering. <laughs> the sodium vapor lights made the sky kind of glow orange, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it because the, the sky is not as moody as it was. Like there was, I think there were a lot of like, like striated kind of clouds in the sky before. It made a lot of like interesting lines. Oh, hold on now. But I don't think that's gonna happen today because it just looks kind of like bam. It so. was also frozen over when we shot that picture. Yes, it was also frozen and it had like ice in the foreground and a bit more of a reflection, but I'm hoping that the uh, slow shutter will just kind of cream out all the waves. It's also funny because at that time I was shooting with an eight megapixel camera and this is what, like 36 or something? Yeah, something like that. That's, that's actually how much my mind has changed. I used to care so much about the gear. I don't even know how many megapixels this camera is right now. <laughs> my wife bought it for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we got the shot. Let's get out of here. Ah! Sorry, I'm blinding you. The wind! <laughs> Dude, we did this in the dead ass of winter last time. Yeah. And I'm here like in the middle of like early summer. I'm like, oh, it's so cold. We'll shoot it. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> and we got back to the, we got back. One could not fix it in no, post. No, because the sky was just totally different. There wasn't like really moody clouds. It was just kind of blah. And then there was no reflection, which was the half the shot was the fact that it was a reflection, like a mirror image, hence the rift. Now it's just the ri. It's a ft. It's a ft. Well, the shot didn't stitch. It no. didn't process. And then and because so there we, was- we, did, we didn't even get like, oh, a shot that was like half decent. We didn't even get a shot. Yeah, it just didn't work. Anyway, that was a big fat fail. Just telling Becky, we were so much more hardcore back in the day. Yeah, where were we ever? This is like all we used to do. Oh yeah. We just used to go out and just shoot photos. Yeah. Just randomly like stop on the side of the like road. On like on the side of the road. Yeah, like, hey, let's just take a photo right here. I think so at some point, we stopped doing that. It's like the novelty of just shooting for the sake of shooting wore off. I think also too, because we were doing like commercial jobs and stuff. So when you make your hobby, your profession, it kind of changes it a little bit. Like that was a big learning curve for us, right? Yeah. Didn't know anything about photography then. No. 
The next shoot that we went into that got caught from the film was a little photo challenge that we had out in Dildo. Every look, the word Dildo is plastered on everything. <laughs> look at over here. It says, as seen on TV, Dildo. Jimmy Kimmel Jimmy Alive. Kimmel Alive. Oh, fun fact, Jimmy Kimmel is the mayor of Dildo. So this is a challenge. Hmm. No, no, it, I'm making this a challenge. This is what we're gonna do. We need, we need to cop two pages today. It's like one spread. Mm -hmm. Is that what the graphic designer lingo calls it? A spread? A spread, yeah. See how impressive I am? <laughs> do you know what a bleed is? The part that you go past, so you can chop it off. Good. So you can print all the way to the edge. Good. Do you know what a bleed is? Okay. Anyway, the challenge that I'm proposing is you come up with a layout and- um, This takes like a day for me to think about Just something. think about a layout. It's a hypothetical. Okay. okay. So you need a main shot. Three detail shots. shots. That's all we need. Okay, let's go. Okay. Dwarfs. I got a circular polarizer on for the first time, like ever. Yeah. That's a f banger! Oh, bang, 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 bang! I'm scared away the shit comes by. Sorry, doves. Banger. Hey, pick him. We look like a state. Let me see your photos. If we get each, you get two photos that are usable, then we have enough for a spread. I got some detail shots of these ropes. Oh, like, that works. Yeah. I liked that picture. Perfect. Okay, one. This is fitting. This thing says, Not a chance. Not a chance you're going to cough any bangers today. <laughs> you got two. That's fine. Because you got two shots. I got two shots. Yeah. Ooh, that's a minimalistic shot. Yeah, I was kind of going for like a. Uh, yeah. Banger. Kinda yeah, like that one's got yeah, some motion. That, I like got that. the yellow. I think it's neat, it's different. It's abstract. What you're showing me is not what you see on Instagram, which I'm really into. But the reality of this is, is that I kind of like started shooting photos in 2005, and then I stopped shooting photos pretty much abruptly in like maybe the early 2010s. So I'm just going back and continuing on what I would have shot back like 10 years ago. That's probably a good thing. And I'm so out of touch with what's considered popular. That's good. That it's considered original. Okay, let's go back to the place. I think okay. that we forced ourselves to come out we got a couple of shots, yeah. That was the challenge, I think, that we um, completed the challenge. It's not about capturing the best photo today, it's about capturing the experience that we're having. When we were in the car, you suggested doing a photo challenge, and I think that was absolutely key to the success of that shoot. Otherwise, I don't think we would have gotten a photo from Dildo. Well, I appreciate getting the credit for that. Despite being uncomfortable, despite it being wet, we ended up getting, how many pages did you 12, say? 12 pages. 12 pages from just that photo challenge. We actually made an entire, almost like sub chapter uh, from this excursion here. Um, and we actually talked a little bit about that challenge and, and what we did. This shot here, which I, I thought was really cool, it's just kind of like a, a minimalistic landscape. It's not only forcing yourself to go out and just produce something, accomplished the goal of documenting a place in time. Mm -hmm. Again, with the weather conditions that we were given, I think that's kind of what we were saying in the film. Kind of started off as a joke, but like, okay, let's just try and see. You push yourself outside the, your comfort zone whilst taking the pressure away. And I think sometimes that's what we need to do as photographers or people who are like posting on Instagram is just like, let's stop thinking about what's actually a banger. Or let's stop thinking about what's gonna perform on Instagram. And let's start looking at things with our eyes and just photographing what's around us and trying to pull on these little techniques and stuff that we've kind of developed over time. When we first start shooting photos, we shoot everything. And then like, as you gain more experience and like you've got years in the bag, you start actually taking your camera out less and less, and it might be a combination of like the novelty wears off. Your threshold for a photo that you think is quote unquote worthy is a lot, it's a bar's a lot higher. You just end up shooting a lot less, and you also get experience because you know how photos are gonna look before you even take your camera out. Before it was like a lot of experimentation when you were a beginner. Yeah, what happens when I change my shutter speed to right. this or whatever? Now we, now we know. Now we're going into situations where we're like, I know what I'm taking before I even get there. I know the type right. of shot I'm taking, I know the techniques that I'm gonna be using. And certainly when you see the conditions, you're like, okay, I know exactly how the shot's gonna look. Yeah. But that's almost a double-edged sword because it prevents you from taking your camera out altogether because you're like, okay, I know this is gonna not really be a great photo and I'm just not gonna take my camera out and then you just lose any opportunity of getting any photos at all. By kind of revisiting, forcing yourself to take your camera out, shoot in the adverse conditions, you might be surprised with what you come away with. One of the places that we went to during our trip that actually didn't make it into the film was Elston, which we went to go to see the Poppin viewing site. We're out tonight, or kind of one 
opportunity to do a sunset shoot. We're <laughs> kind of cold and very tired, but we're pushing obviously because we need the shot. Tonight we've come with a limited kit, one camera bag, two telephoto lenses, and we're gonna see what we get. We've been told that there are no puffins tonight. No puffins? No puffins at the puffin like, viewing site. We can't go to the puffin viewing site to see puffins. There's no puffins. No puffins. But we're gonna go out there and see what we can get anyway, and maybe we'll get a few shit dove photos. Wow, what a bust. That was a bit of a bust, wasn't it? Not only is it absolutely freezing out, no puffins. You win some, you lose some. Do you think we got any good landscapes? I don't know, I don't think I got a shot. No! Hey. Shooting telephoto is really hard, especially like a 200 to 600. Because it's funny, because like we'll come out and be like, telephoto, and sometimes it's like, yes, this is what I needed. And other times it's like, wow, well, maybe a 24 to 70 would have been better for this situation. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna bring gloves. So after <laughs> our little failed excursion, we didn't even really get any landscapes. Uh, we actually went back the following day. Back at the Puffin Heritage Site. What's it called? The Puffin? Puffin Viewing Area. Puffin Viewing Area. And there are some puffins Becky has. Far away. Becky's identified some puffins, but they're really far away, so. Back, back. Right there on those rocks, right there. False alarm, not a puffin. <laughs> it's a gannet. <laughs> a tur? Mur. A mur. I don't know birds. They're so small. 600 is not quite telephoto enough. For this scenario. For this scenario. Like you'd think that 600 would get it, but for birds, they're so small, right? It's really thing. challenging. These guys are so small. They're so difficult to shoot. Yeah, I tasked you with that because I wasn't even gonna try. I, like, I, should, I shouldn't have even tried because it was a, it was a fail. I, I was got like, one picture and I had to crop it. Only one person can can do this. We talked a lot in the film about how we're not landscape photographers, um, and so landscape photography was challenging in itself. But then like put nature photo like bird photography. <laughs> we're also not bird photographers either. No, like, that's like a whole niche of photography that we just don't do. We do a lot of lifestyle stuff. I do a lot of. A real estate, we do portrait work. So landscapes and nature photography, while we really enjoy to do it, it's not really our strong suit. You can't go to the, the puffin houses, the puffin, <laughs> the puffin houses, the puffin dwellings. Yeah. Because the puffins are like on an island away from you. So those are three scenes, two, two of which, which are, fails. are fails. Yeah. The middle one was a success. Yeah. So the next one, we were driving out to Gross Morn. We were on our way to the Western Brook Pond boat tour. And we went and did like a little pull off area because there were these like, beautiful vistas of like fog and valleys. And as we pulled up, this little tiny golden fox came over to say hello. He was so cute. He came so close to the car, I didn't, couldn't even see him. There's a lens camp Hi. There's a lens camp. Hey buddy. Oh no. No worthwhile stop. That was, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't see the fox until we had stopped. I pulled over to like, just look at this. Cause this is obviously beautiful. Oh yeah, I didn't even get a shot of that. And as soon as I pulled up, I looked out at the window and I see this golden fox just walk by. Like almost didn't even see him cause he was so close to the car. He was like below the window. And I was like, holy shit, fox. And in fact, he's like, where? She couldn't, you couldn't even, you couldn't even see him. Yeah. Cause he was so close to the car. I mean, obviously people have been feeding him, which is, yes, you're yes. not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, a fed animal is a bad animal. Actually. Yeah. He posed for me and I went onto the grass and he just sat in the grass, just kind of looking around. Yeah. I had to kind of like walk away from him because the, the foxes that we encountered on this trip are very tame and they are just looking for food. The foxes that were on Signal Hill uh, have since been relocated by some sort of government agency mm -hmm. just to kind of get them away from the public. So this guy, he was like posing for me. He just trotted up. There's one of his like little paw like this. It was so cute. There's one he was like licking or something. He's licking his little tongue out. Yeah. So, and then he, he just kind of sat in the grass and I had a 7,200 millimeter lens on and I just was just having a photo shoot with him. Mm -hmm. We only use one photo in the book. He's like doing this little like, Turn thing, he's posing for me. <laughs> After we went through Grossmore and we went up to Port Saunders, and hey, you gotta watch the movie to see what happened there. We were on our way back and we decided to take a little stop off at the SS Effie to check out this little shipwreck. Like, there's all these little like well-known tourist spots, this being included. Mm -hmm. Especially and, on that drive, there's a lot of pull-offs like yeah. lighthouses and look-offs and yeah, shipwreck. And in my opinion, that's like all low-hanging fruit. Yeah, like Newfoundlanders have probably seen all these spots to death, but mm -hmm. It's like low hanging fruit. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's a gimme. It's like, if I can take one photo that works out as a spread, boom, two more pages. If we pull up in the parking lot, I go down this little stair, this little staircase to the beach. There's a shipwreck on this beach. And uh, there's this gear that I found in the water and the waves are kind of splashing over it, but 
it's uh it's just a little bit too far offshore so i'm gonna take one for the team take my shoes off freeze my arse off here and go into the water holy shit look at the mist here this is epic Ice cold. Oh, it's so cold. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose toes here. Holy shit. Okay, yeah, usually I can tough stuff out, but man, my I was just losing feeling in my feet. Oh, I'm so cold. I don't, I don't think I even got a shot. Got a little bit too low with the camera and it just basically splashed all over the lens. All right, a little, probably a bust, but can't say I didn't try. Did you fall in? What happened? You look a little wet there, bud. So I found this shipwreck. Yeah. And there's this gear popping out of the water. Okay. It looks really cool and the waves like crashing through it. But it was like maybe, I don't know, 10 feet, six to 10 feet out. Did you take your boots off and walk into the water? Yes. <laughs> Anything for the shot, honey. Oh my God, are you freezing? Yes. Take your shoes off and let's And as soon as I put my feet in the water, I just lost feeling. <laughs> it's like freezing. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, anyway, so I got like, I, I snapped off probably five frames and then a wave came up and crashed on the lens. Then I was like, I can't, I can't wipe the lens off and not feel my feet. So yeah. I just got the f out and then, so I don't know if it actually worked out. I don't know if I got a shot or not, mm -hmm. but anyway, Epic. another story. Just take your shoes off and maybe you put the feet heater on. Yeah, they're a bit moist. Yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> I love you. All right. Is it worth going down there? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll show you the footage. Show. The ocean in Newfoundland is not an ocean that one would go in during the month of May. In okay. fact, even in the dead ass of summer. I almost died. As soon as I took the first step in, I was like, ah! <laughs> it was so cold. Anyway, this shot didn't even turn out. And I think the only shot from that scene was the one I shot on the beach. That is the shot from the that worked out. That is that show. godforsaken beach. So those are the couple of cut scenes and little stories from our film, Mozzie. I hope you guys enjoyed this random video. This is the last DVD extra of Mozzie. Hang on, I gotta take a breath. If you haven't seen Mozzie, check it out. We'll leave a link up there or down in the description box. Keep an eye on our Instagram for a potential release of a couple of books, um, probably in the middle of November. A lot of people said, hey, when's the book gonna be restocked? And we're like, never, it's a pre-order. So I think a few people missed out. So we did order a few more. So check out our social media and we'll let you know when it gets released again. Yeah, we do appreciate all your support. Um, everyone who did order the book, thank you so much. You blew our expectations out of the water and uh, hopefully we can do more projects like this where we can make something for you, kind of like this photo book, maybe something a little bit different, but we had a lot of fun doing it. We had a lot of fun on this project. It was a shitload of work, but it was also very fulfilling. Yeah, we're gonna be switching gears next week. Um, so keep an eye on the channel for a little trailer for our next project. Mm -hmm. A series, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Water. Extreme photography. Banger. 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 <laughs> banger. Banger. Banger after banger after banger. Because what if somebody's watching this video for the first time? They're like, who are these idiots? Well, we can say, welcome back to this video if you've seen this channel before. If you welcome haven't- Welcome back to this video. That doesn't make any welcome sense. Welcome back to this channel. Yeah, welcome back to our channel. It's your first time watching our channel, welcome. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I- No. <laughs> So I took off my pants. I mean, I took off, I took off my shoes and socks. <laughs>